Chapter 1 Most people end up in the wrong destination in life just because they choose to take the conventional path. All through this book, Eric Baker seeks to answer a single question. What really produces success? Most books out there cover one phase of the success diamond and give theory without anything actionable. Here, however, Barker explores what brings success in the real world. Drawing on years of research and expert opinions, Barker defines the attitudes and behaviors that can help you achieve your goals in whatever arena you choose in life, career or personal. So, in this summary, we will be taking a look at the traits that are essential for success and how to attain fulfillment no matter the hand that life has dealt you. As Barker puts it, there is no general definition of success. What defines success for you is totally up to you. It's about what you personally need to live a happy and fulfilling life. The vast majority of us have been told about all the qualities and tactics that will help us get where we want to go. But besides a few exceptions, there's no real proof those tactics actually work. Even though much of the conventional life advice about the qualities that lead to achievement is logical and earnest, it is downright wrong. It's time we turn these success myths on their heads. It's time we look at the science behind what separates the extremely successful from the rest of us. Learn what we can do to be more like them and find out, in some cases, why it's good that we aren't. Of course, there is no single approach to achievement. Sometimes what produces success is raw talent. Sometimes what produces success is raw talent. Sometimes it's the conventional advice our parents give us, and other times it's the exact opposite. Success is not about being perfect. It is more about knowing what you're best at and being properly aligned with your context. Sometimes an ugly duckling can be a swan if it finds the right pond. Your unique capabilities, the habits you may have tried to banish, the things you were taunted for at school, may ultimately give you an unbeatable edge. Chapter 2. You don't have to play by the rule or play it safe to be successful in life. Following the rules doesn't create success. It just eliminates extremes, both good and bad. Eric Baker. It's every parent's wish that their teenager becomes the high school valedictorian. Your parents advise you to study hard and get good grades so that you can do well and live a great life. And very often, they are right. But that's not always the case. Getting good grades in school and graduating the top of your class doesn't guarantee success in life. Research conducted at Boston College followed 81 valedictorians after their graduation. Years later, nearly 90% of them are now in professional careers, with 40% in the highest tier jobs. They are reliable, consistent, and well-adjusted, and by all measures, the majority have good lives. One thing that stands out, however, is that none of these people go on to change the world, run the world, or impress the world. The reason why the number ones in school so rarely get to be number ones in real life is that our educational system rewards students who consistently do what they are told. Academic grades have almost no correlation to intelligence. Instead, they are an excellent predictor of self-discipline and the ability to comply with rules. The truth is, following rules doesn't guarantee success in life. People who are afraid to break the rules and take initiatives often end up living mediocre lives. This is why when valedictorians get to the real world where people seldom play by the rules, they struggle and find it difficult to make an impact. So if those who play by the rules don't end up at the very top, who does? According to a study conducted by Harvard professor Gotham Mukunda, there are essentially two types of leaders in life, the filtered and the unfiltered leader. The filtered leaders are the kinds that rise through formal channels, getting promoted, playing by the rules, and meeting expectations. The unfiltered leaders are those that don't wait for anybody to promote them before they reach the top. Think of college dropouts like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, who chose not to play by the rules but followed their passion with utmost zealousness. In the study, Mukunda concluded that unfiltered leaders are those who did something groundbreaking during their careers, not those who went to Ivy League colleges. Also, if you take a look at the Forbes 400 list, you'll discover that those who choose not to follow the conventional path tend to have way higher net worths than those who do. So what if you like following the rules? What if that's just the type of person you are? Does that mean you're doomed to live a life of mediocrity? No. In the following chapter, we will take a look at how your greatest weaknesses can become your greatest strength. Chapter 3 Your greatest weaknesses can become your greatest advantage if used in the right context. You're more likely to reach the heights of success and happiness if you embrace your flaws. Eric Barker So what makes the unfiltered leaders so much more impactful than filtered leaders? According to Eric Barker, they all have intensifiers. They have intense qualities that differentiate them. Generally, these qualities are often considered bad or negative by society, but due to the specific context, they became positives. Intensifiers are qualities that people normally see as poison, but under just the right circumstances, can be a performance-enhancing drug. If you were told your son's upper body would be too long, his legs too short, his hands and feet too big, and he'd have lengthy arms, would you be happy? Most definitely not. None of those characteristics sound objectively good. But when a seasoned swim coach hears those things, he sees nothing but Olympic gold. Michael Phelps is someone who was born with this exact body type. His legs are short and his trunk long, making him more like a canoe. He has disproportionately big hands and feet and long arms. However, longer arms mean more powerful strokes in the pool. Phelps joined the U.S. Olympic team at age 15. Nobody so young had done that since 1932. And today, thanks to his unique makeup, 
Phelps holds the all-time record for the most Olympic gold medals. In essence, the same traits that make people a nightmare to deal with can also make them the people who change the world. Under the right circumstances, there can be big upsides to negative qualities. Your bad traits might be intensifiers, which can be turned into superpowers. To leverage your intensifiers, you have to first know yourself and then choose the right field to play. If you're good at playing by the rules, for instance, if you're a filtered leader, then double down on that. Find an organization with clear-cut rules and a definite path and go full steam ahead. If you're more of a creative, an unfiltered leader, you'll be betting against yourself if you try to succeed by complying with a rigid formal structure. By dampening your intensifiers, you'll be not only at odds with who you are, but also denying your key advantages. So be ready to blaze your own path. It's risky, but that's what you were built for. When you choose your pond wisely, you can best leverage your type, your signature strengths, and your context to create tremendous value. Such self-knowledge not only makes for a great career, but it can also create value wherever you choose to apply it. Chapter 4. While nice guys tend to finish last, they also often end up at the very top. Conventional life advice tells us that good conquers all, just like at the end of a superhero movie. But sadly, studies after studies have proven that's not the case. When it comes to office politics, for example, appearances seem to trump truth. Research shows that managing what your boss thinks of you is far more important than actual hard work. It turns out, ass-kissing pays much more than hard work. Those who made a good impression often tend to get better performance reviews than those who worked harder but didn't manage impressions as well. Studies show that flattery is so powerful that it works even when the boss knows it's insincere. Ass-kissers aren't the only ones who thrive in society. Rude people do too. According to the Harvard Business Review, men low in the personality trait agreeableness make as much as $10,000 annually more than men high in agreeableness. So, does this mean you should stop being nice and start being a jerk? No, because all the benefits of being jerks only work in the short term. The nice guys often win in the long run. While rude and toady people tend to do well on the average, nice guys are much more likely to make it to the very top. According to Wharton School professor Adam Grant, there are three kinds of people. The givers, those who are consistently looking for ways to help others. The matchers, people who try to keep an even balance of give and take. The takers, people who selfishly always try to get more and give less. In his studies of engineers, medical students, and salespeople, Adam discovered that matchers and takers end up in the middle of success metrics. Givers are found at the very top and very bottom. Those who were the most giving to others consistently came up short. They missed more deadlines, got lower grades, and closed fewer sales. These same studies revealed that the majority of productive engineers, students with the highest grades, and salespeople who brought in the most revenue were all givers. It may seem contradictory, but it actually makes intuitive sense. We all know a great guy who goes out of their way to help others and yet fails to meet their own needs or ends up exploited by takers. We also all know someone everyone loves because they are so helpful and they succeed because everyone appreciates and feels indebted to them. So there's nothing bad in being nice and being of good behavior. Just be prudent and don't let the takers and matchers of the world take advantage of you. Bad behavior is strong in the short term, but good behavior wins over in the long term. Eric Barker Chapter 5 Your ability to keep going when things get tough is dependent on your outlook on life. Everywhere we turn in our society today, we'll likely come across the idea that grit, sticking to something, working hard and not quitting, is the key to success. The school of thought is often right. Grit is one of the main reasons why we see such differing levels of achievement between people of the same intelligence and talent levels. Interestingly, despite their lack of impressiveness in academics, most millionaires often say during interviews that their teachers in school complimented them on being the most dependable. In other words, they had grit. Since it's so obvious that we need grit to be successful, why don't we all have it? Well, according to Eric Barker, whether or not you have grit is down to the stories you tell yourself. In our minds, we say about 300 to 1,000 words to ourselves every minute. Those words can be positive, like, I can do it, or negative, like, oh God, I can't take this anymore. As it turns out, when these words are positive, they have a huge effect on our mental toughness and ability to keep going. The level of your success in life is directly related to the stories you tell yourself. Some of us say, I'm not cut out for this, or I've never been any good at these things. Others say, I just need to keep working at it. Or, I just need better tips on form. What determines the kind of stories you tell yourself is largely your outlook on life, whether it's optimistic or pessimistic. When you believe things will not get better, it only makes sense that you stop trying. You just shrug and go home. In difficult but not impossible situations when perseverance is needed, pessimism kills grit. When you're optimistic, you live a healthier and longer life. If you believe that you can overcome any situation, if you preserve long enough, then when hard times come, you'll act accordingly. By thinking positively, optimists persevere and end up creating more opportunities for themselves. So, how can you go from being pessimistic to being optimistic? By controlling the stories you tell yourself about the world. Optimists and pessimists have different explanatory styles. They shape their stories of the world very differently. Pessimists tell themselves that bad events will last forever and are their fault. Optimists, on the other hand, tell themselves that bad events are temporary and are not their fault. 
When you shift your explanatory style from pessimistic to optimistic, you feel better and you become grittier. Did you know, the meaning of life for the human mind comes in the form of the stories we tell ourselves about the world. Chapter 6. Self-confidence is good, but self-compassion works better. There is no denying the fact that successful people are confident, and the more successful people become, often the more confident they are. Research shows that overconfidence boosts productivity and causes you to choose more challenging tasks, which makes you shine in the workplace. Overconfident people tend to score better in job interviews and are more likely to be promoted than those who have actually accomplished more. Overconfidence has also been shown to even increase output among teams, while underconfidence harms it. The reason why confidence is such a powerful element is that it gives us a sense of control. People who believe in themselves see opportunities where others see threats. They're not afraid of uncertainty or ambiguity. They embrace it. They take more risks and achieve greater returns. However, while confidence can improve performance and success and make others believe in you, it can also be extremely dangerous. It can lead to delusion and narcissism. Moreover, confidence makes it very difficult for us to learn and improve. When we think we know everything, we stop looking for answers. We all know for sure that the lack of confidence is bad, and even though overconfidence makes you feel good, gives you grit, and impresses others, it also comes with loads of downsides. So, which path should you follow? Well, Eric Barker says you should choose self-compassion over self-esteem. Self-compassion beats self-esteem. Eric Barker. Studies show that increasing self-compassion has all the benefits of self-esteem, but without the downsides. You can feel good, perform well, and not turn into a jerk or become complacent. Unlike self-confidence, self-compassion doesn't lead to delusion. Being self-compassionate gives you an unbiased view of the world. To develop self-compassion, start by talking to yourself. Talk to yourself nicely, gently. Don't beat yourself up or be critical when things don't go your way. Also, accept your fallibility as a human. You don't have to be perfect all the time. No one can achieve perfection. Trying to be perfect is irrational. will only leave you frustrated. It's easier to forgive yourself than trying to be overconfident. So, embrace self-compassion rather than self-confidence. Did you know, the power that comes with confidence can turn you into a jerk. Feelings of power have very negative effects on a person's character. Power reduces empathy, makes us hypocritical, and causes us to dehumanize others. Conclusion There is no single approach to success. What matters when it comes to success is alignment. Success is not the result of any single quality. It's about alignment between who you are and where you choose to be. The right skill in the right role. An attitude that opens doors for you. A story that connects you with the world in a way that keeps you going. A network that helps you. And a job that leverages your natural intensifiers. A level of confidence that keeps you going while learning and forgiving yourself for the inevitable failures. A balance between being a jerk and being too nice. The key to finding the element of alignment is to know yourself. Know your strengths and weaknesses. What are the things that make you who you are? What are your intensifiers? What is your outlook on the world? What stories do you tell yourself? Are you a giver, a taker, or a matcher? Are you underconfident or overconfident? You are a unique being with a unique blend of characters. Find out your qualities and align them with the world around you. Pick the right field to play in. Find a profession that leverages your intensifiers. Create a story that keeps you going. Try this. Determine what your intensifiers are today and look for ways to leverage them, no matter what the traits that make you unique are. Remember, sometimes an ugly duckling can be a swan if it finds the right pond. Under the right circumstances, there can be big upsides to negative qualities. So know yourself and align your qualities with the world around you.